Today I'm going to be showing you two AI tools that you can use to easily come up with new design ideas as well as create the design specifically for PNG files and SVG files that you can sell on Etsy. Hi, I'm Bailey. I'm the owner of Bailey Designed Co., one of the largest digital product shops on Etsy, and I'm here to help you either start or grow and maintain a profitable digital product shop on Etsy. So the first thing that we're going to be go ahead and doing is is finding our keyword. Since this tutorial will be specific to PNG files or SVG files, if you don't know what type of design you want to create, I would suggest hopping over to a keyword research tool like eRank and just type in PNG or SVG and you'll be able to filter through hundreds of different of types of results of keyword combinations with the word PNG or SVG file. If you are a new shop, I would highly recommend going for combinations that are green across the board, meaning that the search volume is high and the competition is low. If you are a more established shop, feel free to go after higher search volume and higher competition keywords. So the design um, idea that I chose for both a creation of a PNG file and an SVG file is um, something that is coming up. It is seasonal though it has super low competition and a high search volume every year and it combines two different niches. So I chose the trick or teach PNG keyword um, because once again uh, fall is coming and um, usually for Etsy you want to have your seasonal products up at least one to two months in advance before um, the start of something. So since it will be back to school in middle of August and Halloween in October, I chose Trick or Teach because it's combining two hugely popular niches, teaching and Halloween, and just gives you a much better chance of ranking for something due to the low search results and then the combination of the two. So the first step that I would do is um, put in your keyword in Etsy and then filter by top customer reviews because this will pull up the uh, listings that have sold the most and have the most amount of reviews so you can get a general idea of the types of designs that are successfully selling right now. So uh, the first thing that I see is that it's just a lot of bold and bright colors. It definitely just has the word trick or teach and then it has items that revolve around school and Halloween as the elements or the images and the designs. So um, this style has been super popular on Etsy the last couple of years and um, while I would recommend definitely not mimicking any of these just because as a new shop uh, most of you wouldn't be able to rank for something if you could create something like this I would try to create something different or if you do create in this style just add something that makes it more unique and a better product than what is already out there. Um, I will go ahead and point out the difference of the two types of files we'll be creating. This one right here is the perfect example for a sublimation or PNG design only. It is not a SVG because it is not used with um, our cutting software like the Cricut or the Silhouette. It is for printing like on a coffee mug or on a t-shirt using sublimation or DTF and you can see it's very colorful. It looks a little bit watercolor effect and um, not very harsh lines that a cutting machine would need to use. The good example of an SVG is right here. Um, it's basically font and then very basic image. Um, images just so the cutting machine doesn't have a difficult time trying to trace and cut this type of image. So um, now that I see, and I do see a lot of retro theme down here too, which was popular last year. Now that I have an idea of the types of designs that are ranking on this first page, the next step um, would be to hop over to um, chat GPT and get some ideas for um, a combination that might be a little bit different than just an apple or books and it looks like the boho rainbow Just to see if we could come up with any other types of designs that would work for this uh, particular style. 
So I typed in 10 design ideas for a teacher about trick or teach for a school teacher. I use this a lot when I'm coming up with new designs for tumblers or mugs or shirts um, just because if I say design ideas about whatever the topic is for who it is, it seems to spit out um, better information than is if I just put in 10 teacher Halloween designs. So um, being specific about the trick or teach I think helps it. The first one that I saw is the one that I'm going to go ahead and go with, although a lot of these were really good ideas, and if I had time, I would probably make them all, but for the sake of time on this video, I'm going to use this first one, which says trick or teach potion. Create a design featuring a witch's cauldron with books and teaching supplies inside, brewing knowledge instead of spells. And I liked this one because I didn't see anything similar with a cauldron with books or teaching supplies. And I'm not going to use the brewing knowledge instead of spells because our keyword is just trick or teach, but I like this part with the books and the teaching supplies. So I was able to get my idea in about 10 seconds by putting this in here. And then my next step will be to go over to Midjourney and create my images that I plan on using. So it only took me about four different variations before I got the result that I was most happy with that kind of matched the bold, bright, uh, colorful looking type of illustrations that most designs were using. And it was this one right here, I won't read this whole thing, but I went ahead and upscaled number three, which is this one, just by clicking on the U3 right here, which upscaled that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and save this image and then upscale this, just so it is enough high quality that I can use this in my design. And then I'm going to go ahead and go over to Kittle. And if you don't know what Kittle is, it is just a kind of similar to Canva. The only reason I choose to use them um, a lot of the times is because they have a lot of font combination templates that are already created for you that you are able to use for print on demand and digital designs. Uh, do feel free to read their policy if you want to make sure you understand the licensing. But I like them because they have lots of trendy font combinations and the templates are already set up so it makes it really fast when designing. If you find things that you like to use um, that fit the niche and category that you're creating for. So since I like the retro vibe, I'm going to actually use this one right here because I didn't see uh, anything anywhere similar to this. So um, it will be a good design just because it's different. So I'm gonna delete this pumpkin and I'm gonna go ahead and add in my new little cauldron, which I did earlier. It's right here and pull this up right here, center that. And then I'm gonna just adjust the color slightly so it's just a little bit brighter there. And then I don't like the skulls, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove those. And if you hover over elements right here, you're able to search Kittle's elements that you can use. And I'm just looking for pumpkins to replace those skulls. And this one matches the overall aesthetic fairly well. And then I'm just gonna go up here and the text. I'm gonna add in something that relates to the teacher niche, which is an apple, just to fill it out a little bit more to make the apple actually red go and it's bright and it's kind of vintage looking so it matches the design and I'm gonna go ahead and remove the background which is just under the layers tab over here since I just need this to be a transparent PNG I'm gonna call that good and then I'm just gonna go up here and download this. You will want to change your DPI to 300. And then I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at 4,500 by 5,400, which is just your typical t-shirt uh, PNG design. And then my background is removed, but I'll just 
keep that on there as well and then download as a png file and that will be it for that if you wanted to you can definitely mock this up i've already put it over here this is a slightly different version because i didn't change the color of the apples but you can drag in any type of mock-up that you've purchased either on etsy or creative fabrica and add your mock-up in there for a really easy way to do it. I just think it's better to show the product in use when you create digital products on Etsy. I've just seen a better conversion rate when it's on an actual product versus just on a white background. Um, so then I would just go ahead and download and save this. And that was your PNG file. For the SVG version, you can just hop back over to Kittle and um, you can save this and I don't know that I would actually use this one as an SVG just because it's a little bit too complicated. You could move that up that way it would just be a flat circle line but a Cricut just based on past experience because I've cut with them before it would be pretty difficult to weed this out in the design. So just taking the same concept is what I would go ahead and do. And it's not gonna look anywhere near as this just because most SVG files aren't gonna be full of color like this. But uh, for what I would do is, I, for the SVG version, is I would go back over to Canva just because I know I have a lot of elements in here and this is just a different way of showing um, Canva instead of Kittle. You could do the other in Kittle if you wanted to and just find circles and a similar font. Um, I don't know if you'd be able to find this part pre-made. Uh, that would be free, most likely not in Canva. So I'm just gonna kind of go for the same idea with the SVG. So to start, I'm just going to go ahead and add my font or my text. And what I'm doing now is going over to Canva's um, AI feature, which is a text to image feature, to see if I can get it to pull up just a very basic cauldron. If not, um, or if there's one that I just don't like, I would, well, that's not a cauldron not at all. I don't like any of those, so I'm gonna try it one more time. And if not, I'm gonna go ahead and hop over to Mid Journey and see if I can get a better one to come up with. Um, and I don't like any of those, so this is why I never rarely ever use um, Canvas features for their AI I think. So um, I was messing around with this one earlier. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in one more time to see if I can get a better one to pop up. Okay, I don't mind this one. Um, and these books should be okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and upscale number one. And I have tons of little folders in here because I like to keep them very organized with the type of images I'm doing just so that they are easy to find if I decide to go ahead and use them again later. So I would recommend staying um, organized because you'll get um, a lot of files and then you'll hopefully want to use them again and um, not know where they are if you don't keep them organized from the beginning. Just a little tip. Okay, and that looks good there. So then I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the background out of here as well. Then I'm going to go ahead and come back over here because I want one more thing um, in here that kind of hopefully should tie the whole teacher thing. In. I'm going to go ahead and just to add a little bit more here, I'm going to go to effects and click on an outline that in white and just make it a little bit bigger and put it up a little bit more up here. 
The main thing with SVGs is you kind of just want to watch the line, make it pretty clean lines because when they print this or um, and want to cut it, um, though they could print this as a PNG and, and use it the same way we did earlier, but there every single thing that's a different color is uh, printed as a different layer and then they layer this together. So you don't want it too intricate or else they won't purchase it. That's why most of them are fairly simple because it gets to be a little bit um, uh, messy with the weeding process when you are dealing with lots of different colors and layers. And I'm actually going to go with the black one just because I'm keeping it all the black and orange theme and I like it. Though I don't know how this might with the SVG um, cutting process, it might not work as well, but need a few things here. So I'm actually going to go over to the Canva elements and type in a bat. Uh, in order to use it for a digital, um, you will need to make sure that you click free and it will just pop up the ones that are available to use. So I'm going to go ahead and click this one and then add another one over here, just a little bit smaller, just to fill in these gaps and just make it kind of cute. I think I'm going to go ahead and leave this one alone. And um, the next step, this, this is a little off. There we go. Okay. The next step would be to download this as an SVG. So you'll just come up to here and then click SVG and uh, transparent and download. That way this will download as an SVG file. And then if you want to say that as it's all options, you can do that as well. Um, you would just need to download each of those individually, zip them into a folder and then add them to your Etsy listing. I hope that you um, got some value out of this tutorial and see how easy it is to not only come up with uh, new design ideas, uh, using ChatGPT and then also using Midjourney to come up with your uh, image creation. Thanks for watching.